Hello, all in S2. Mr Kirk here. Hope you're all doing well. Happy New Year. Uh, we're going to be starting our new unit on rock and pop music, um, which I think you'll all really, really enjoy. Uh, I'm going to talk you through the first couple of slides today. Uh, the unit's probably going to take a good few weeks to get through, and we'll set you some tasks each week. Um, and my face will pop up every so often, so be prepared um, just to guide you through some things. So your first bonus question you will have a Google document that goes along with this. Um, if you can try and name the six bands or artists on this first slide, you might need to ask mum or dads or parents or carers to help you with a couple of them, but some of them you, you will know. So. Feel free to pause at any time. Okay. So this week we're going to learn the differences between rock and pop music and we're going to revise some musical literacy just to keep you on your toes with some of the stuff we've covered in class. And on the Google document you will have uh, 10 questions relating to this task and if you can answer them as best as you can and it's all stuff that we've covered in class. So you can go through the um, questions at your leisure but I'll just pop through them quite quickly. Remember you can pause these as it goes okay so don't worry about doing the questions as i'm talking just now but you can sit in your own time and do these questions so a little bit of literacy recap how do we remember the notes on the lines what words are spelled in the spaces where does this symbol go in our music and what is it called What do we call a two beat note? How many beats is a semi brief worth? Name this type of note. What is the difference between a crotchet and a minimum just by looking at it? I'll give you a little clue here. You've got to think about the shape and colour. What is the name of this symbol? remember it's not a hashtag what does it what does it do when it's placed before a note what is the name of this symbol and what does it do when placed before a note add the following note values together okay so our main differences we're going to look at are the differences between rock and pop music Everyone will probably be familiar with quite a lot of this. There's probably going to be quite a few um, chances that I'm going to play guitar or keyboard along with things for you to demonstrate some of our concepts we're going to cover. But what are the main fundamental differences between rock and pop music? Well, if you look at rock music, it's a style of popular music with a heavy driving beat. It usually features electric guitar, bass guitar, and drum kit along with vocals. And here's a little example of rock. Okay, and we move over to the pop side of things. Pop music is a style of popular music, that's where the word pop comes from, with catchy vocals and a beat to, to, to dance to. You usually tend to find it's sung by a solo singer or a group of singers, and you tend to find more accustomed to recording than live performance. Here's a little example of pop music.
Okay, so you probably notice the sound is quite different, um, but when we get into a little bit more depth, you'll, you'll tend to think some of the same features appear in both styles of music. But we're going to look, first of all, at one of the main instruments you'll find in both pop and rock music. And there's a two types of guitars. Now, hopefully, I will have, the uh, next time I see you, I'll have an electric guitar set up here so I can demonstrate that. I will warn my neighbours, first of all, just in case they get a fright. But I do have an acoustic guitar at home, and I will demonstrate that to you as much as I can. But our main differences between the two instruments, you'll have seen these in school. They come in all shapes and sizes and colours and models. Some are more expensive, some are cheaper. But the main two differences okay, between the, the instruments. First of all, we're going to look at the acoustic guitar. Now, the acoustic guitar does not need amplification to produce a sound. So that means you don't have to plug it in. You can just pick that guitar up, start strumming, and there away you go. Now, there's advantages and disadvantages to that. It's great for sort of sitting in your living room playing, great for sitting in the classroom playing. Maybe not so much when everybody else is playing along with you. Um, it's hollow. It's a very light instrument. It's easy to carry. The electric guitar, however, is a solid-bodied instrument, which means the wood is solid. Okay, so what you need to make a proper sound from an electric guitar is what's called an amplifier. You need to connect that with a cable. You'll probably recognise the difference between the two instruments, but they're both used extensively in both styles of music. You tend to find, though, in rock, that the electric guitar is quite a prominent sound. So we're going to look at the electric guitar first with a little example of early rock. I just thought I'd point out to you all that that's one of my favourite songs of all time. If you want to have a listen to that one, it's called Apache, A-P-A-C-H-E, and it's by a band called The Shadows. Very cool. Very cool band from the sort of late 1950s. You should check some of the stuff out on YouTube. Lots of instrumental guitar music. So we'll move across to acoustic guitar now. A lot of you will be a bit more familiar with this one because we have lots of them in school. You tend to find two main types of acoustic guitar. You have a nylon stringed guitar, which we have a lot of in school. They're quite good for playing um, because the strings are softer, uh, but they're not quite as loud. And you tend to have a steel string acoustic guitar. We do have some of them in school as well. That's the one that kind of gives you the marks on your fingers. But as they say, no pain, no gain. So if you're going to learn to play the guitar, you have to be prepared for nippy fingers. So the acoustic guitar sounds like this. Okay, so we're going to look, I'm going to bring my guitar over to show you very quickly, uh, a couple of guitar techniques, the two main guitar techniques that you would have um, when you're playing. So you've got strumming the guitar, which would mean you would take uh, your, either your fingers or a, a plectrum, which some of you have seen, um, over all of the strings at the same time, and plucking the strings, which would mean you would pluck individual strings. So I'm going to pause just for a second, grab my guitar, and I'll be straight back. And just like that, I've got a guitar. So I'm going to demonstrate you uh, the technique of strumming. Some of you might recognise this song. This is the first song I ever learned to play on the guitar. 
I'm not going to tell you how many years ago, but a long time ago. But this is the first song I learned from guitar. I'm going to try and see if I can get, let you see what my fingers are doing at the same time. Okay, so I'm strumming all the strings. If you can see that there. Okay, so here's a little example of strumming. So play all the strings at the same time. Now, when you pluck the strings, slightly different, okay, slightly different technique. Let's try to get this guitar into camera. So I'm actually playing using one note at a time. Now, when you tend to pluck the strings, it's quieter. But it's quite a nice soft sound. So here is a wee example of me playing um, something you might, some, if you're in my class, you might remember I showed you this, this is by Bob Marley, which was when we were looking at the reggae unit. Both good techniques, both really useful in different styles of music. Uh, you tend to find in rock music, it's really quite loud. Okay, we're going to talk a little bit about the concepts the next time I see you, uh, to do with riffs and distortion and all the different guitar effects you can use. But with an acoustic guitar, it tends to be more expressive. It tends to be a little bit more melodic sounding. It tends to be softer sounding. And using the plucking technique gives it a really nice kind of sort of melodic feel okay so i hope you're all doing well what i'd like you to do is look back over this as well please uh, this will be uploaded and you will have a google document to go alongside it and to answer the questions so basically what we're looking at the bonus question at the start was if you could name all six of the artists on the front slide and then there's 10 literacy questions i'd like you to fill in please on the google document can you just remember though, just double check that you're not sending back blank documents. I don't think any of you are meaning to do it, but there's a lot of the time you we get uh, emails back from you and you have just sent back what we sent to you. So hope you're all doing good. Stay safe. Any problems, contact me through Google Classroom and I will see you all soon. Best of luck.